mentioned for quite some time I, in terms of years that they had some way of, of going, going the truck down in Vietnam. That led me to advise the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff that we had a potential weapon system. And so I was, uh, I was asked to uh, start to put together a top secret operation to go to, to Vietnam to see if we could make it rain. Project there. Popeye. Shut off. When it rained, it caused a lot of problems. Shut off right so there. So during the monsoon season, there was so much rain and water in the roads that the truck really couldn't move very freely. Our mission was to make it rain. Completely shut off. Uh, during the dry season. On that particular day, the clouds were very small. There just weren't any real big thunderstorms or anything like that. Uh, but I picked the clouds really shut that off. was sitting out essentially by itself uh, with a number of small clouds. I'm talking about clouds and two stops or somewhere near the freezing There's level one coming over there. to really grow. And I nurtured one of those clouds until it finally got, got it in well past the freezing level. And then the cloud developed a lot of convective activity and it started so sucking doing clouds into it. Over here. Just building up and building up. And I took a series of pictures where I called them called for 41 minutes. And then that one shut uh, off. By the too. end of 41 minutes, uh, we had flown up to over 65,000 feet and still off. couldn't reach the top of the cloud. So we knew we had a hard burn. So we have two disappearing jets leaving a prominent trail and then completely disappearing in the middle. Here. Now he turned on. He's turned on inside of that haze. Turned off in between it. Now he's turned on over the haze, over the other sprays. Now he's, well no, he's, he's off and on, you can see the sprays are puffing.
climate engineering, geoengineering, solar radiation management programs are an absolutely undeniable reality. The ongoing illegal climate intervention operations are decimating the biosphere. This includes further fueling catastrophic forest fires all over the globe. Those who ignore or deny what they can see with their own eyes, the profoundly altered aerosol sprayed skies, grid pattern skies on some days, with nothing on other days, are turning two blind eyes to the immense and ongoing climate engineering threat. How will General that you spray turn dispersions off are often seen being turned on and off, this cloud, which countless film captures prove thing. is occurring in skies all over the world. We're not seeing condensation trails. Jet engines are not being turned on and off. We're seeing intentionally sprayed aerosol dispersions that are a primary aspect of geoengineering and solar radiation management. If jet aircraft are being used, in fact, so for geoengineering and solar radiation he's management, on aerosol and off spraying right now. operations, I think he's they must shut off have after nozzles. That. And indeed, and they do. While again. In addition to military tankers, commercial aircraft are being utilized in the ongoing geoengineering operations Though commercial carrier personnel do not appear to be in any way involved. Why aren't the climate scientists, like those in the National Weather Service and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administrations, speaking out? In addition to having no First Amendment protection, there is now an illegal federal gag order on all National Weather Service and all NOAA employees. Climate engineering programs are nothing short of weather warfare on innocent... For the past five years, I have documented aircraft yeah, emitting like, trails across the sky. Seems like I have taken hundreds off. of videos and thousands of photographs of these persisting emissions. Off and off Many of the aircraft I have like. witnessed appear to be spraying something into the atmosphere. Yeah, Uneasy so with my observations, I wanted to know exactly what was causing the aircraft to leave, leave visible trails so that did not dissipate. Sort of I reached out to local, middle. state, and federal government agencies for they information off, and man. assistance. What I experienced was disillusioning, to say the least. When I called the EPA, I was told that the so FAA to handled to aircraft emissions. Sort of when I called the FAA, the they call, told me to call the EPA. I was shuttled from office to office with no agency ever accepting yeah, responsibility so or accountability. Basically my calls were not off. returned, nor were my concerns ever Turned addressed. The sage advice I finally See received that? from an EPA Nothing. from the EPA was and to hire a plane and do my own testing. The hell over there. This was especially disheartening since I had been led to believe that the Environmental Sticking Protection around. Agency was the ultimate protector of the environment. Then there'd be something over Additionally, here. the EPA advised me to contact the Department of Environmental Quality for the state of Virginia. Not surprisingly, the DEQ informed me that they do not regulate mobile sources of emissions, don't go to airports, and don't check what is being loaded on planes. As for my request for my yard to be tested for heavy metal, chemical, or biological contamination, I was told that the Virginia DEQ could not use state money to test for those materials. Furthermore, my complaint was in an area that they had no authority to investigate, another dead end. I reported Naval Station, Naval Air Station Oceana military jets for dumping fuel over my neighborhood and spoke with at least 30 individuals at the base. I finally spoke with Terry Chamberlain, head of the environmental office at Oceana. Mr. Chamberlain bluntly informed me that the military regulates itself. Needless to say, they continue to dump unburnt fuel over the residents living close to the base. For several years, I electronically reported on airplane pollution using the environmental violations form on EPA's website, epa.gov tips. It was referred to me by an ASRC federal contractor working for the EPA. I have always included my contact information on the tip report and identified specific aircraft that can easily be traced. No one from the EPA has investigated any of my formally filed complaints. Since I became interested in the possible dangers of chemical spraying in the environment, I have contacted the Virginia Pollution Control Board, National Weather Service, Oceana and Damneck military bases, NOAA, NASA, the Department of Defense, Brookhaven National Laboratory, the Department of Energy, the Department of Homeland Security, FEMA, the Health Department, the Department of Travel, countless federal agents and operators, the Virginia Beach Police Department, and even the White House, all to no avail. 
To date, no one from any agency has investigated my complaints. I was told to talk to my local representatives. Every agency I contacted responded to my reports by telling me that I was seeing condensation from en engine exhaust. Aircraft engines do emit water vapor, of course, but vapor that quickly dissipates.